Welcome to the podcast, the Roman Atwood podcast. Really wish we'd change that name. Got my beautiful wife here, Britt, and George Janko. I like your name, by the way. I just want to let you know I'm a fan of the podcast name. The Roman Atwood podcast. I think it's just weird to say your own name. Okay, so I yeah. had this, uh, I, I went through this whole thing with the name. For like the first six episodes of my podcast, <laughs> I didn't have a name. And then we went, we like branded it, we got money. It was called The All True with George Janko, basing <laughs> off of the word altruism. And then I was like, bro, I hate the fact that I have to explain my f- title to what everybody. What does it even mean? <laughs> Altruism is like somebody who like doesn't focus on himself but works around people around him and helps his neighbor and stuff like that. But it's like, imagine every podcast, like, oh, this is what my name's about. Yeah. And I'm just like, all right, it's called the George Janko yeah. show. Yeah. It makes sense. It it's does. Easy. I think it's just weird to say it, right? Yep. Welcome to the Roman Atwood podcast. Yeah. Even though my wife's right here and it could be the Atwood podcast. That's true. But I like that's a wrap. R A P, Roman Atwood podcast. That, oh, okay. Cool. That's that works as well. Yeah. I don't know, dude. Unless you want me as a co-host, <laughs> and then we have to rethink the name. We're looking. You could be the new. <laughs> she, are you guys looking she, for She's trying co- to bail, dude. She's no trying to bail. Way. It wouldn't work. I'm just not good. It, I'm not good at it. Why? Why are you not good at it? Are you like nervous to talk, or yeah. you just don't like sitting and talking to your husband? Both. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much already. <laughs> yeah. Dude, welcome. Thank you. Just so you guys know, George, you come from the biggest podcast on the internet. I do. How does it feel to come? Down to the, the horse podcast on the well, we, no, we are the number one podcast in the world, so just I, I know. And then you come to the Roman Atwood podcast, which is come on. I, I'm I'm honored to be here because remember, dude, like I was not a social media guy until I met Logan, and so like, but I knew of all of you guys. Yeah. So when I'm still in these moments, it's very uh, it's very exciting to me still because like, dude, like I I grew up watching all your guys' pranks. I got to watch Logan. I got to watch everybody. So like. I don't think your podcast is small. In my eyes, I'm just like lucky to be here. Dude, we're honored to have you. I'm pumped. I want to talk a lot with you because on Impulsive, we didn't get to talk much. Yeah, that's what happens. You ignored me too. Yeah, I know, right? Especially when you walked in and you were dapping up everybody and you looked at me like, yo, f*** you. And I was like, and we had to cut around that. And I was like, we should cut that. You're going to look really bad. And then you spit on me too. It was really weird. But they put it in. (laughs) They put it in. Uh, yeah. But it is, it's, I will admit, just for, for his audience, it, it's very hard to like engage with two people like this, especially when it's, and then there, you forget about this person. No. And I always tell the boys, but like they, it, we talked about it and it's, it's going to be even harder to have a guest all the way over here. And then all three of us You're are just, just staring glazing. at Glazing. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like the comedic relief sometimes if I'm funny. Dude, you've, ha- you've got to interview the biggest of the biggest. Yes. Like but, incredible. And I, there, it's so funny because there's only certain people I get nervous about. Like okay. Arnold, huge. Who I'm watching him wasn't nervous. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like really weird. It's like Tony Robbins couldn't even like my tongue wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm like, dude, this guy motivate. Like just the way he, yeah. Who claps like that, bro? Yeah. Like that's scary. Try to be know. lazy around that guy. You can't. You cannot. <laughs> he just and he talks so much about what he's doing, and you're like, oh, I'm a failure, dude. Like, <laughs> no I don't. Chance. I don't do anything in life. He goes, I'm feeding. One billion people. That I'm like, dude, I don't even think I fed 11. Like, I need to hurry up. Like, <laughs> That's true, man. You've got to do the greatest. Like, I can't imagine who's next. You guys probably have. We, and- just, we just did Dave Portnoy again. And then um, we did Lele's. And then Jake's After Fight. Um, awesome. That was pretty cool. I released a song on that podcast. Really? Yeah. And you, have, and you now have your own podcast. I do. I got my own podcast because I, I got into stand-up comedy. Right. And through stand-up comedy, it takes a lot of um, practice when it comes to the art form. I found out that this my it's my strongest skill set area of work, but it takes more time to figure out your voice. And I was blessed to come from the social media realm because I have my own audience and I ha- I could sell tickets right now. But my mentor, who's Joe Coy, who goes, "Hey man, like the one thing I advise you is if you sell one person a ticket and they don't enjoy that show." They will remember that forever. Mm. So regardless, if you get really good and you get amazing, they're just like, they feel like they wasted their hard-earned money. So I've been trying my best to open up for these big comedians and then find my voice. And what takes a stand-up comedian five, six years, it'll take me like five months, not because of my skill set, but because of the atmosphere and the people teaching me. And so like, I believe one day when I, when I break out as a, as a stand-up comedian, I'll be sharpened and like ready to go. And that way, when I sell a ticket to my audience members, I will feel confident that they will come back to that show. Heck yeah. Yeah. I've seen some of your clips, man. Thank you. You're man. legit. I, 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 a lot of people, they see me on, on Impulsive and they're like, dude, he's not funny. But that's just my personality. I, I like corny jokes. I like that. That's not my stand-up bit and they don't know that. So I always tell people, I'm like, listen, like, 
there's a reason why the biggest comedians are asking me to come on their stages. They're not like, oh, I'm doing him a favor. They wouldn't do like, you're not going to do somebody a favor with your crowd. Like that's a very, very big thing. Like if I was a stand-up comedian, I would be very selective who's going to perform on my stage, especially before I come out and perform. Mm. Um, but I'm working my ass off and I realized that it was more given to me than earned. So I respect it and I honor it. And I like try my best to make sure that I, when I'm on that stage, that whoever did me the favor of getting me there is like, okay, cool. Like this kid deserves it. He's good to be there. It's awesome. Thank but you. you're grinding, putting in the work. That's why I did my own podcast to stop vlogging because I can't vlog and come up with ideas and go do that lifestyle. And then I can't even show my practicing or meeting the behind the stages yeah. or anything like that. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to go do my own podcast, talk about my life. And then it gives me the skill set of uh, talking all the time. So like if I'm on stage and something happens, I'll be able just to like, on. yeah. Dude, how did, how did the impulsive come up? Like, how did you end up as the, the number three? Like weird, that's weird. And like, I, I, <laughs> it, it always said, I, people think I'm so cheesy for this, but I, for the life of me, believe this. Like, I swear on my mom's life and my life. Like, it's just, this is what I believe. I don't believe my industry's, like, my life is controlled by me at all. Mm. I think I believe in my God so much that I wake up every single day and I'm just, my job is this, enjoy the day. Mm. Because if it's given to me, I don't want to be a brat and not enjoy it. So it's the first thing I always tell myself is enjoy today. Second is work as hard as I possibly can. And third be really, 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 really kind to my neighbors around me. And that, my friend, is the only reason I'm here today. It's not because of my skill sets. It's not because of my hardworking ethics. Mm. It's really just people would meet me and be like, wow, that guy's a nice guy. And it just yeah. goes to show that people want to work with nice people. Yeah. They don't want to work with somebody who thinks they know it all. I always tell people I'm, I'm always in last place in my mind, always in last place. Whoever's in front of me, I'm trying to absorb. I'm trying to learn. Yeah. I'm trying to like get something out of it. Um, and with that situation... Me and Logan, uh, how we originally uh, started working together is he, st he was doing vines. Yep. And I started writing skits and he told me, hey, stop the music thing. You're really good at acting and writing. So you should do that. And I, and I did that. And then I, uh, I took a year break because I shot a, a, a scary movie called uh, No Escape because I was doing my acting thing at the time. And, and, and to be honest, I, my whole life I wanted to be an actor. I did acting for one year and I booked like 11 or 13 shows. I did two movies. Like I was, dude, I was cruising through it. it. I was cruising through it. Like, here's the reason why. Again, casting directors. When I walked in, I wasn't nervous to be like, hi, I'm George and I'm auditioning. I was like, what up? And like, I just walk in because like I was already social media recognized. So my confidence is like, dude, I don't need this job. Like, you know what I mean? Like, but in a humble yeah. way, because like, I'm like, I'm not going to beg you for it. If it's for me, it's for me. And if it's not for me, God will give that role to somebody that deserves it. So I'd walk in with this attitude and I was just booking after left, after right. And I realized, I'm like, oh, I don't like acting, bro. Like I just sit here for nine hours in the trailer. Hurry up and wait. Hurry up and wait. And then they have all the creative control. By last movie though, No Escape, the director Will and the producers Jeff and Kelly, uh, they wanted Pete Davidson for the role. And I told them, I go, listen, pay me nothing. Do whatever it takes. I promise you that. I'll put people in that seat and I will make sure that that character shines. So they gave me the role. And by the way, I don't know if anybody does acting, but a table read is when you go to the table, like a long table, and you guys read as the characters, but you're already cast into that same character. I was the only one who was a maybe. <laughs> everybody was like assigned their roles and they were like, yeah, maybe George Janko. And I'm like, uh, you don't have any, and by the way, I'm dyslexic. So like reading is already nerve wracking for me. So I'm like, Jesus Christ. Like, so I, that was like a whole experience. I did the acting thing and I was going to do an episode with, uh, with Logan about, um, my movie. So like just as his boy and, uh, I went on as a boys only and I, and I, and I, there was a viral clip. I don't know if anybody ever watches my TikToks that repost about me, but it's me in a white hoodie and I'm wearing like a bear and I'm talking about, um, how Jesus walks in every room with me mm -hmm. and it went really viral. And it was the first time that like, I was like, Oh my God, as a creator, I always had this version of myself that wasn't real. What up, guys? Y'all, we're gonna be. Yep. Yep. And like that wasn't me. I was mimicking Logan and Jake and yep. everybody, because uh, I wanted to pay my bills, <laughs> so yep. I can do what I needed to do to get to the acting part. Yep. But I was stuck in this re weird realm. Like, I don't want to be an actor anymore. I want to be creative, but then also I was like, I don't like being this fake creative me. 
And so when I watch that clip and I'm watching thousands of people repost it and be like, yo, this hit me so at home. And I was like, whoa, like that was, that was the real me. And that sits so much more in my heart mm. than like getting dapped up for anything else that's not me. Yeah. Six, nine just comes out of prison. Nobody wants to interview him. Nobody. Two reasons why. One, he's a rat apparently in everybody's <laughs> eyes. So they're like, no, F him. We don't want him on the podcast. And then the other people were like, no, man, we're going to get killed. I don't want that. That guy's like, people are on the way to kill him. I don't want them on the, on the podcast. Um, Mac didn't want to be a part of it. Uh, and he was the, the host of um, Impulsive at the time. And I think it was a, he, Mac, Mac is like, he's a, he's a true artist. Mm. He's not in it for the money. He's not in it for the fame. He likes to do it for things that he likes. And he just did not want to do that episode. Something that was in him was like, no, I don't want to do that episode. And immediately my opportunity, I just turned to Logan. I go, yo, me. I go, put me on it. Put me on it. And he said, no. He's like, no, bro. He's like, this is too big of a podcast to like just throw you on. He goes, you've never even hosted before. <laughs> and I looked at him and I go, Logan, we've known each other for years, bro. Have you ever passed me the ball and I've dropped it? And he goes, no. And I go, bro, all I ask is just think about it. I go, I promise you I'll do a good job. I promise you. Like, I will make sure that you're happy with my performance. And he talks to Mike. Mike's like, man, man, I don't give a cheeseburgers. <laughs> <laughs> so Mike was in it. Uh, Logan was in it. And I just, I remember it like it was yesterday, bro. Because I really do feel like this, God put that opportunity in front of me. I sat mm -hmm. there and I told myself, I go, I'm only going to start talking when I realize that it's falling off. If it's falling off, then I will just pick it up. I'll, I'll figure out a way to pick it up. And I always go, whenever I need like a little boost of cheer up, I'll look at that clip because I remember Logan looked at me like, like, go ahead. And I just ripped Short it, bro. Time. I was douche, 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 just like telling all the jokes, doing all the callbacks, bringing up great questions, putting in good tags in there. And uh, it got to the point where everybody's laughing so hard. Even the security guards that had masks were wiping <laughs> their tears in their masks. And I was making fun of these giants and he literally turns, he goes, who is this guy? He goes, he's hilarious. And Logan goes on the show, he goes, he's not even a host. He's supposed to like, <laughs> he's just our friend filling he in. He just works here. And he goes, he's going to call his girlfriend and said he did a good job. And in that moment, I'm like, dude, maybe I should be doing a podcast. Heck yeah. And then uh, Logan and Mike, they're like, hey, do you, do you want to do this with us? And I was like, yeah, I want to do this. Bro, I'm at, like, listen, yeah, yeah, imagine yeah. an already successful show. Yeah. Everybody mm. knows about it, hears about it, listens to it. And then an audience that's already, because audience members don't like change. They don't. Yeah. Like no audience members likes change. Yeah, you're right. So for you to come in and like make a change where people are like, even the comments were like, yo, he should be a, a permanent co-host. Um, it changed my life. It, it, you got the Island Boys, dude. Bro, I mean, bro. <laughs> what else could you ask for? <laughs> dude, you know, there's two things that you I get You retired out. right then. <laughs> bro, two things I get. The Island Boys and then. Logan Paul for his opinion on religion. Like, I'm like, dude, like, leave them alone, bro. Dude, like, it's leave just them that alone. clip just went everywhere. 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 That, the Bobby Lee one and the religion one. Those yeah. are like, when I was on social media, it, it, it's so funny. It goes into waves, right? Yeah. It goes, first and foremost, it was, hey, you're Logan's friend. And then it was like, yeah, you're that guy from Vine. Then it was like, <laughs> oh, you're George, right? And then it went like George Janko from Vlogs. And then now, because of Impulsive, bro, they know everything about me. Yep. It is like a whole different level. It's, it's, it's a whole different level. Awesome. It is. It is. And I, I was cheesy. It's gonna, I always say it because I feel like this cheesy alert in my head. But my mom told me this, and, I, and I, it always stays in my heart. We were having dinner, and some of my friends have a rule. Hey, if I'm having dinner, I don't get up. Okay. Uh, and it was like three years ago, I was thinking of implementing that because I realized that it started bothering the people that I'm eating with. Hmm. And so I was like, you know what? Like, it's true. You know, I get up and they all have to stop eating because they're trying to be respectful. And so I'm like, I don't want their food to get cold. And so I, I, in my mind, I was about to like implement it. And I told my mom, I go, mom, how do you feel about this? And she goes, when you were a kid from first grade, because I was performing in, in elementary school, I was like, they would take me out of school um, to perform on the news or music videos or. Okay. I have like all these things. I, I started out as a dancer, but I, the story is I, since I was in first grade all the way till now, every night or every multiple times a day, I asked God to open up this door, mm. open up this opportunity. When Justin Bieber's movie came out, I sobbed because I was like, bro, like 
I know I'm supposed to be in this industry and I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to get there. And I'd always beg God. And my mom goes, just know every time that one person comes up to you and asks you for a picture or says, I love you. That's one of your prayers that God is answering. Mm. How dare you say no to that? So get up. I don't care if your food takes 10 years or gets cold or gets gross. She goes, get up because that person's excited. That person spends time watching you. Get up. Yeah, absolutely. And so like I made it a vow. I don't care if I'm shitting. I'll get up every time. Yeah, we, like, do, we do the same thing. I don't think I've ever, ever said no, ever. Mm-mm. Never. Never. So does it hurt you when you have a bad day and you're like like crying and they come up to you and you have to pretend that like yeah. everything's Stop. good? You know what where it really hits is when I, when we're out with the kids and I really mm. I really explain to the kids because we, we have been not able to do what a lot of, you know, to go to a fair or a hometown fair is, is very complicated. But I always explain to the kids that every one of these people coming up to, to us is the reason we have the life we have. Amen. And the kids are just so excited. Like, that's th- a great way of teaching. It's them. such a real thought. It's like you have to understand that that person is the reason we're living the life we have. Yeah, and people forget it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, yeah. Co- people get comfortable. And I feel like comfortability equals death in every yeah. situation with your body, with your mental. And then also, if you get comfortable with luxury, then you don't experience the luxury anymore. And so, like, you have to humble yourself. That's why I will not buy myself like a ridiculous car or like all these other things. Like, bro, it's not the time. Yeah. I'm trying to build a family. I want to get like a wife and then have money to have us to live our dreams. Like I don't care about impressing anybody around me, but I do very much care that I'm not disrespecting anybody around me. If that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. No. Nope. Yeah. So no kids, no accidents. <sighs> Bro. <laughs> like, how do, no, I, there's been some accidents, <laughs> but thank God he showed me favor. There was no, uh, dude, you know how I know <laughs> Bell was the one for me. It was the first time in my life where I was like, get pregnant I, I wish you had a kid. kid like that was the first time because like if she, if my kids came out anything like her God blessed me blessed me multiple times over like yeah. I don't want my kids to be like me I want them to have <laughs> I want them to have my uh, ability to like be always happy like a golden retriever but we both have that and then also my absolute dying love for God and, and, mm. and the fearlessness of what anybody cares about me for that those are the only two qualities that I want in my kids, but everything else I want them to have bells. Like every single one of them. Love it. Yeah. Something I relate heavily with you that we've never, we've never even spoke much off of a podcast, right? No, like never. We text back and forth, but something I relate to you heavily. It, how old are you right now? I just turned 30. 30. So, God, I was just starting my YouTube career. No way. Wait, yeah. how old are you? 39. 40. Whoa, you guys look great. I'm guessing you're not 39. She just did my makeup. (laughs) (laughs) No, you guys look great. So, yeah. So a a lot of my 30s, I I, I see a lot in you where you love the Lord. But what I was doing was um, living still for the world, but Mm. I prayed constantly. Mm. And I was receiving endless blessings. And I was... I was calling my mom saying, mom, I'm not doing none of this. Like every time a video go viral, I'm not doing this. Dude, like, it, you it, feel it. It's like, it's being given to me. Yeah. Whatever's happening, whatever success, whatever's coming in, it's all being given to me. I'm not doing it. It feels out of my, like I'm not capable of this. Yeah. Right. So I was very, very spiritual, but I was still living heavily for the world. <laughs> I was still partying. I was still drinking. I was still whatever, right? We were having fun. I see that a lot in you, but as we've joined a church and we've learned about the Lord's mercy and we've learned of his grace and we learn a lot more of how you need to live to receive blessings. And I am walking proof that is not true. I was living very sinfully according to the Bible and according to the word, but God loved me, loved me and blessed me so heavily no matter what I was doing in my life, no matter how hard I was drinking and partying, and he was blessing and I could feel it in my life every single day. And well, it's your parents' prayers too. It's Amen. all yeah. of it. It's all of it. Yeah. But the more I learn about how you need to live to receive blessings, I, I can't confirm that. I cannot confirm that because I was showered with blessings, I even bl- in my... H- how I see it is this, bro. Like we're always going to miss the mark. Yeah. And and when I'm on a plane and I look down, every building looks the same shape to me. Yeah. 
but if you if you're on the ground, one's like thirty stories, one's two stories. But from from a distance, they all look the same. Mm. That's how I feel like we are with God. Regardless, if you go to church every day and you don't even swear at all, yep. versus me, He judges the heart. He judges what you're going through, what your challenges are, what your temptations are. Like my temptations are going to be very much different than a kid that's in elementary school. Mm. Um, and so I tell people like. If you're so focused on like, oh, I have to be perfect, it'll scare you and you don't want to be a part of it because you're like, dude, I'm too far away from it. There's it's no too way. hard. It's, it's overwhelming. too hard. Yeah, it's, it's too hard. So I used to always tell people I'm in the mud, I'm in the trenches, but I'm with my boys and I'd like to talk about Jesus. So it's like, yeah. I, I don't think I'm anywhere near to go preach his name. Like like a preacher because I don't I, I read the Bible every day and I'm I'm in intense Bible studies with people and rabbis and priests and and I still feel like I need to be very sharp with my dialogue when it comes to the word, but I don't think it should stop me from talking about him. And mm -hmm. I think that's the problem that people have. I think people think they have to be a professor to talk about it. I talk about my mom and dad because I love them. I'll yeah. talk about you guys afterwards because I love this experience. Yeah. I really love God. Yeah. I, I don't love him because what he's done for me, man. Like when you get in a relationship with God and you start inviting them into other people's houses mm -hmm. and seeing them get out of drugs and seeing them get out of their trenches, you're going like, dude, like all I want to do is sit and thank him because yeah. you're watching this turn over and everybody's lives just start getting better and better. You, you realize that like, again, a lot of people will... I'm going to try to basically explain it this way. When I was a kid at five guys, I was really, really happy just making burgers, bro. I'm going to school. And I remember three years ago when I was going through really, really dark times in this industry, I kept asking God, I go, God, I just want to be as happy as that kid that was at five guys. I just want to be happy. I just want to happy. Why am I not happy like that? Why am I not happy like that? And I realized it's because my joy didn't come from my finances, didn't come from my work. It didn't come from anything besides the Lord. So when I was a kid, everybody used to be like, why is that kid so happy? It's because my parents read me the Bible every day. Mm. I got to experience who these prophets were and why they were this excited about life and what they thought was wrong and what they thought was right. I had a good gauge on life and that's what ha gave me my happiness. So when I got to a different level of um, success where the temptations were a little harder, um, um, the, the rooms were a little darker, God was just kind of shaping me up. He goes, hey man, I think you just need a little bit more time with me mm. and everything will balance out again. Mm. And I did. And that's when like my heart, bro, like I got even more of the happiness than the guy from Five Guys. It started changing my, my, my visuals of things. Like, all right, we're going to the club to record all of us drinking and, 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 and partying. And God's like, but you don't do that. Why are you, you're always promoting it. Why don't you challenge yourself? Why don't you make it a little bit more artsy? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And then, so like, this is how, this is, okay. Th I want to say this very short so I can make sure it's like, it pierces somebody's ears. I think a relationship with God and blessings is just wisdom. I think that he, you're borrowing his wisdom. Mm -hmm. I think when people make a decision, it's based off of their intellect. I don't want to touch that fire because it's going to burn me. Mm. I'm not going to do drugs because it's going to break my parents' hearts. A lot of things that we don't do that's not good for us is based off of fear. And so that's why I've kind of tell people like people that I fear the Lord are really happy people because they stay away from things that are going to torment them. They're going to destroy their homes. They're going to destroy their families. When I was in middle school or high school and all these people were smoking weed and drinking, they were all thinking about themselves. I want to be fun. I want to be cool. Mm. I want to do this. My thoughts and my friends that are Christians were like, what is this going to do to my mom? Yeah. What is it going to do this to my dad? Like you, once you start thinking about yourself, you're, you're going to start corrupting yourself. So mm. it's just a relationship. Like you don't, I tell people like, you don't have to be clean to come to God the same way. You don't have to be clean to jump into the shower. Yeah. Just jump in, just yeah. have a relationship. See if it works for you. If it doesn't work for you, then bounce, leave. If you're going to try everything, bro, like at least try that. It's going to yeah. maybe make your life a lot better. I think one of the biggest gifts that's overseen is just something that I personally thank God for every day is that he has showed me he's here. That's a gift. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are in complete denial. They don't believe. And I just think believing is such a gift. Uh, it, gives, it gives me, my family, so much hope. Mm -hmm. It's so much hope. And uh, I, I'm, I'm so thankful that I know with certainty that he's here. It's a big difference. It's, it's just made my life. I kind of touched on an impulsive, and that clip went very viral. 
of of us of me talking about uh, my religion and uh, because we never we never talk religion. It was the first time you ever brought it up. Yeah, we we really don't, and and I still I never uh, attempt to push it at all. But I do like to speak my my love for the Lord, just like you're saying. Like I'm proud of it. I'm of course. so There's proud There's nothing of to be ashamed. I think yeah. you're, you're, you're just probably scared. You don't want to push people away from it. I don't want to make somebody believe that I'm telling them this is what you need to do. Got it. It's very personal to me and my family. Yeah. Like it's just what we do. Yeah. Right? But the uh, the joy is undeniable, right? The real joy. And I, and I will say that the more that I have set aside things of the world, the more joy I've found outside of the world, which is, which is a hard thing to understand. Uh, a lot of people, people would assume that if you have to give up certain things, it's, it's makes your life harder, but it actually comes with a lot more joy. Of course. So you're actually potentially uh, just so much more happy without these distractions. Everything in life is work, like was worth working for. That's it's supposed good. to be hard. Yeah, of course. It's, it's like even working out, right? Like you work out, you don't want to work out. Yeah. You feel sore, it hurts, yeah, it but then sucks. the growth is like, it's worth it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I want to actually, I want to, I, I, I journal a lot lately. Um, and it's been helping me tremendously. That's awesome. Tremendously. I've been, I've been, how many journal books have I bought and I haven't started? Like, I really want to get into it. I'm yeah. telling you, dude, it's because I didn't have time to see a therapist <clears throat> and I, and I, need, I needed to get my feelings out. I feel like I needed to express myself and not be judged. So I started journaling and I realized I needed to journal because I have too many thoughts about one thing. I overthink. So when you have to journal, you have to remove the thoughts that you really don't think are real thoughts. They're just like filtered thoughts. And that's helped me out. But I, I wanted to uh, share this thing that I wrote <clears throat> to see if you guys kind of understand and, and, and feel the same. <clears throat> I wrote in my, in my books when I was going through it and I was describing happiness and joy and peace. And I kept thinking of children. Because when you think of joy, peace, and, and calmness, I always think a certain age where I didn't know. Yeah, too much innocence. Innocence, yeah, innocence. But there was a comfortable factor of knowing that mom and dad have it. I don't have to worry about my meal. Mom and dad have it. Mm. This roof will always be above my head. Mom and dad have it. Um, something scary is downstairs. It's nighttime. It's okay. Dad's home. Mm. There's a comfortability of having your father next to you all the time. And then I remember reading multiple times that we are children of God. Mm. And the, dis- the, descri- like the describing factor of a Christian is a childlike in heart, right? Mm-hmm. So I put these pieces all together. And I think the reason why Christians find joy and peace in him is because he's our father. And we know during tough times, scary times, we have a father that is looking over our finances, our peace, our health, our mental. When people look at me and they go, how do you believe in a God? I can't even fathom walking on this earth not believing in my God. Can you imagine? Yeah, I'm it the same way. It is terrifying to think that way. And people are like, oh, well, you just have a weak mindset. It's like, no, man, I have a child mindset. I'm free. I'm having fun. I see my bills piled up. Guess what? God told me don't flutter into diamonds and all this stuff. Now I have good money in the bank. I'm not stupid. I'm not spending my money yeah. to impress people. He's I have financial secu- uh, security. But that came from not being worried about what people think yeah. about me. If I was always worried, I'm chasing a price tag. I'm just killing myself over it. I'm not gonna, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Yeah. And he says the strong, yeah. like, okay, they go being humble and meek is the, is, the form of a Christian and people think, some people will think that's weak. I think it's the strongest position you could be in. Think about if you truly don't care about what anybody thinks of you mm-hmm. or says about you. Just imagine if you go into every circumstances not fearing it because you know the outcome's in your favor. Bro, you, that, when people are like, oh, I broke the, the matrix, that, bro, like, have a relationship with God and watch how every door will open for you, that's good for you. Mm-hmm. And then you'll get into this mindset of like, if it didn't open, instead of you feeling sad about it, you're like, oh, thank you, God, because that door could Dodged have been terrible. Bullet. Yeah. Dodge the bullet. It's, it's, it's hard to explain to people why I'm absolutely in love. The same way it would be hard for you to explain why you guys are in love, right? It gets no. weird. You're like, oh, because she's pretty, and like we hang out. And like, it's weird. I can never understand your guys' love because yeah. I'm not in the relationship. Yeah. 
But if you are in the relationship, you'll be like, oh, okay, cool. The Holy Spirit's like wind. I just, I just got done talking about this. The Holy Spirit's like wind, right? Okay. You could feel wind, but yep. you can't see wind. You could feel it, especially when it blows hard. You could feel it, right? Can't see it. You could also watch it maneuver other things. Like if it's blowing on your girlfriend, you're seeing her hair. Well, I, I can't see the wind, but I could see the effect it's having on her. Mm -hmm. That's what I feel like the Holy Spirit is. It's invisible. Well, my God, if you're focused on it, you could watch it move. Oh right? man, absolutely. It saved my life. I mean, it's, 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 it's my comfort. It's my comfort. It, it, it really is in all circumstances, no matter what we're in, that's my comfort. That's my peace. And, and somehow always joy comes out of it. Um, it's magic. It's literal magic, you know? Like to, and then to have that belief is, I believe it's just such a gift. It's not something all people get. What, what is it that made you guys feel like, okay, cool, like I, wanna, I really want to jump into this? Like I, and like, was it a tough situation? Yeah, so... It was uh, also the, the feeling of that spirit. It, like it's just like what you said. First time. It was like getting like hit in the face with, with the spirit, like hard. Like you can't deny it, mm. you know. It's like okay, we get it. But isn't it crazy how you have to look for it? You well, yeah. You can't just. It, it's the whole knock and. Yep, I, I have well, that tattooed on me. Right, it's yeah, yeah. it's like you, Seeking you, you find knock. You, you do you, gotta initiate it. Have to. You do. It's it's an invitation, and you have to respond to it. I've interviewed many people that have the same exact story. I got so low that I eventually dropped to my knees and asked for help, and their whole life changed. Their whole life, that's undeniable to me. It's undeniable. You have to reach for it. It's the sheep uh, uh, parable. It's not in the Bible, but it's, it's a story my mom told me when she was growing up. She said that there was a shepherd who was watching over a bunch of sheep. And one little sheep would run away and he would keep running away. And he would grab it and bring it back. And then it was like, bah, and it would just leave again. And he was like, ah, oh, and he would grab it and bring it back. And bah, it was gone. So finally one day he just broke its legs and immediately is it like, see, see that jaw? It just dropped. You're like, whoa, that took a turn. That's not love. That's weird. Yeah. Broke its legs and the shepherd put the sheep over his shoulders, washed him, uh, uh, fed him, put him with the other sheep. And when the sheep's legs were fully healed, it learned, oh, I should stay here. This is good for me. Now, a lot of people go, hey, man, why not a leash or like a barrier? <laughs> That's like pretty aggressive to go straight to breaking the legs. But the sheep's here and the shepherd stands tall and mighty and he could see farther than the sheep can. And what the shepherd kept seeing him run towards was wild wolves that were waiting to tear the sheep to pieces. Mm. So he, in the end, would rather break a leg and save the soul than to just let it go and be torn to pieces. Mm. So sometimes I feel like God will let circumstances hit your life. So you just kind of remember like, oh, you know what? I'm not as mighty as I think I am. Mm -hmm. I'm not as invincible as I think I am. Mm -hmm. I should probably stay with my shepherd. So I always mm -hmm. tell that story because sometimes I when people are like, that. why would God let this happen to me? It's like, first of all, you let that happen to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and the Lord's not going to mess with your free will. Never. You know, he's, no. he's going to let you, mm -hmm. you, know, you, you can act how you want to act. It's the biggest gift a man could give another human. Yep. You know that story somebody told me, uh, sorry, not somebody told me, it's in the Bible, um, where I, I believe it was Abraham where he had to go and sacrifice his kid. Oh man. And everybody always comes up to me, yeah, your, your God believes in sacrifices, bro. He wants you to kill your kids. Go read Abraham's story. He didn't kill his kids. And I go, bro, go read the whole story. It's a foreshadow. <laughs> so for those of you guys that don't know what a foreshadow is, in a movie, they foreshadow something. For example, if you're moving in on a, on a, on a, a crane shot closing in and you see like a gun on the ground, right? And later on, you notice that that gun is in the end. It's called a foreshadow where they bring something from the past to the future. When the angel stopped <clears throat> Abraham from killing his son, yep. he looked over and there was a sheep, a lamb. To be sacrificed. With thorns on its stuck. So it's stuck with thorns <clears throat> on its head, yep. like how Jesus was. So when people go, how could your God ask you to sacrifice your kid? It's like, cause he knew the outcome of it and he wanted to show you, yeah, that hurt you, right? That sucks, right? Sacrificing your kid, that's what he did for you. Yeah. So that thing that you're like, how dare he and how could you? He did that for you. And you don't even want a conversation with him. Man, you're going to love having kids, bro. I can't wait. You're going to gonna love it. Kids, um, it. It takes you into that, that, that 
uh, now you're a, you're a father, right? Mm. Just just as we wouldn't be upset when our kid's trying to walk and he keeps falling, right? He, he keeps falling. He falls all day. We're never upset with him. I never thought about it from that Just as we yet. fall constantly. The Lord's not upset with us. You get back I up. swear I've never thought about it that way. When you have, you're going to love it. You're going to love it because you're just, looking at it. Are you going to you be more forgiveful of yourself? You're, you're just understanding the father aspect. If you're a child of God, you're really understanding the, 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 the love that you have for this child. You can't, you can't, there is no other love like it, right? So you have to imagine how much the Lord must love you, right? Now I want to pop out a kid. <laughs> Go make some babies. <laughs> dude, I, I would, dude. I, no more. It's so funny, man. Like, I, I told my best friends in Arizona, they're like, yo, like, what's next? Like, what's what's your next five years? Because I plan in five years. And I go, my whole life, I, I wanted to be somebody else. I just wanted to be somebody mm. else. I wanted to be so-and-so on camera. I wanted to be this singer. I wanted to be da-da-da. Mm. And when I got everything, it's so funny. Like, we got to the road and God goes, all right, where do you want to go? And I'm like, yo, dude, I want to be me. I want to be me. Like, I don't want to be anybody else. I don't want to be pretending to be this person. When, when me, Logan, and Mike go out, right, we all have our own thing. Yep. Everybody comes up to Mike and they're like, bro, you got you to gotta try this cheeseburger. Or, Mike, thank you so much. Your book really saved me during mm. this time. I had a, 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 an older woman come up to me with her daughter and she, they both gave me a hug. And they said, could you give that to Mike? Mm. And she started sobbing. She goes, my daughter got off of drugs because of his book. Awesome. So that's his effect. Logan inspires so many people to go out and be a Logan Paul and, yep. and to, to, to break down any barrier and anything that you think that is in your way. Mine recently has been from, from the Jews to Muslims to any denomination. They come up to me and they go, dude, the way that you just don't care, yeah. that you'll just speak what you believe in that is the first time in my life where I'm like, dude, that is what I want to be known for. I don't want to be known for my song or my movie. I want to be known for making you want to be more you and be really you and believe in what you believe in. Because that to me is like what I had to, 29 years of my life was fighting for. Yeah. I think identity, like fighting with your own identity is what everybody deals with. Just because we were blessed and knowing what we want to do with our life doesn't mean we know who we are in this life. Yeah. And I think an identity crisis is something that everybody does. And I think that if you're going to have an identity crisis, go to the person that built your identity. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. You're turning into a fisherman. Just come here. You yeah. son of a bitch. Like, I, you know, I swear <laughs> like a fisherman too, dude. Everybody's like, how do you swear? I go, fucking dude, I swore my whole life, dude. And I swear in my heart, I don't see it as like a curse. Like when I curse somebody, it's like, yo, go fuck yourself. That's like, all right, yeah. buddy, relax. Yeah. But me, it's like, yeah. And then she said, and like to me, it's just hilarious. It's, like I, I don't see it as a. I as just talked. I, I talked about this in the last podcast. I miss swearing. I do. When you stop swearing because your kids, though. Yeah, man. I think I, that's when I'm gonna stop I, swearing. It will. Yeah. It, more than likely, it will. Or Maybe they piss not. me off, and then I'm like, you <laughs> get into your room. <laughs> that will happen too. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you 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 want to set the example, right? Of course. So that's that's where we uh, we 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 edge that out. But yeah, man, I come from rated R, hard R. Yeah. That's, that was all my content was hard R, and then we switched up to. <laughs> you could to, get clipped for hard R, bro. Hard R, dude. I can't believe you said that, bro. <laughs> I can't believe you. Uh, yeah, so yeah, you're gonna love kids, man. It's 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 a, it's it's uh it's the greatest blessing and the most stress you'll ever have in your life. What? Okay, yeah. so there, I actually want to say this on your podcast, just in case anybody who's who's dealing with some um, uh, worried like weary feet in their life right now, because uh, this took me out of my like. It made me feel super blessed and uh, grateful. And I think if you can manage being feeling blessed and grateful, I think regardless of where you're at in life, you'll feel great. Uh, this man came up to me and I was like, bro, <laughs> just like everybody who's having a bad day, my life, bro, like, God, I just want to, like, I don't want to be here anymore. He's like, blah, blah, blah. And it's always like, always like over dramatic, right? And he goes, go and write down all of your blessings. And I was like, I don't want to do that. He goes, just do it. Trust me, it's going to make you feel better. I wrote down all my blessings and I'm very thorough and I reflect a lot. So I had like pages and mm. I'm very like cheesy. So I'll write down anything that I'm truly grateful mm. for, bro. Like, like breath, uh, 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 the fact that I have full hair. My dad's bald. Like, that's cool. Like I have hair. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like there's all these things I wrote down and he comes up to me. He goes, okay, now you could only keep five. Mm. I was like, what? I just gave you six pages. <laughs> he goes, go and, and say to yourself, you could only keep five. God would only let you keep five. The ones that you choose, he'll give to you. And are the ones I came into this earth with. Yeah. 
And he goes, so shut up. He goes, he's giving you everything you need. Go out and work. Stop complaining. And bro, okay, this is one thing that changed my life. Sorry to be like all cheesy and Tony Robbins. I love it. I believe, okay, okay, hear me out. This is like a little thing I've been, I'm going to try to write a book on it. I'm trying to figure it out because it changed my freaking life. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God, right? Yep. Uh, this is Old Testament, my guy, so you'll love this too. To, to, uh, he, this is a Jewish man back there. So, I was like, <laughs> so in the beginning was the word and the word was with God, right? <clears throat> and we're, we're, we're married in his image, correct? Yep. So if you look in the mirror, it's a reflection. It's, it's you're made in his image. For example, a glove is made in the image of your hand, so it fits in perfectly. Yep. Okay, check this out. He created everything with his mouth, bro. He literally go, let there be light and there'll be light. And he, he would tell the blind people, get up, sin no more. Like mm. he always started with his mouth. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're made in his image. How are you speaking? How are you speaking about yourself and your surroundings? Mm. How are you speaking about your friends? How are you speaking about your loved ones? How are you speaking when no one's around? That tore me up. Mm. I hung out with individuals that got me in a habit of speaking ill. I used to be always positive and corny. And then one day when I was in 28, 27, 29, I was like, man, I should probably chill with this. I look like a bitch. Like I look like corny. So I started trying to fit in even in my older 20s. I was like, yeah, don't that and blah, blah, blah. And that's yeah, blah, blah, blah. And I started getting depressed, bro. I started gaining weight. I started being like different. And mm. I one day woke up, I'm like, bro, it starts with your mouth. It starts with your mouth. It has to start with your mouth. So I, I trained myself by, like a psychopath, I would look in the mirror and I'd be like, you're amazing. You're good. Mm. And I had a hard time forgiving myself. So I said, hey, if God's going to forgive you, who are you to not forgive yourself? I just started talking so positively to myself. And then if I talked ill about anybody, say Alex was annoying me. And I'm like, bro, this fucking Alex kid is bothering the shit out of me, bro. He's such a and blah, 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 blah. If I said it in my head, I'd make sure that out loud when I was by myself, I would say two nice things about Alex and retrain my brain to like, hey, enough of that shit. Yeah. Stop gossiping, stop <clears throat> belittling, stop, because I was hurt. So I'm always trying to figure out a way like that guy because he's blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Bro, once I changed this viewpoint of my life, everything became so much more joyful because it, it, it just changed the direction of how I think. I think it's a frequency and I changed my frequency. Absolutely. So I really, really believe watch your mouth, bro. If you're toxic, watch your mouth, watch your mouth. And dude, you'll, once you want to stop and nip gossiping, I swear to God, bro, <laughs> try it for three days. You'll realize, dude, everybody gossips. Everybody gossips, bro. Everybody. Family members against family members, friends against friends. And yeah. you're like, bro, how am I asking God to like make my friends around me better to me? And I'm over here shitting on everybody when they're not around. I'm like, bro, I got to fix myself first. And once I fixed myself, I didn't give a shit what everybody was saying to me. I was just yeah. happy in my own little shit. So yeah. like, I hope if anybody's like in a rut right now, it's probably because of your mouth, bro. Think about it. The guys at the gym, let's go get a pump. Guess what they get? A pump. <laughs> and people that are depressed, bro, I don't even want to be here right now. Guess what they get? Bed. Bedtime. They're just sitting in their bed watching something yeah. on TV. No, you're right. You know what I'm saying? You're right, man. It's the whole positive mindset in general. Yeah. Like you you are, your your mind's either your enemy or your best friend. Mm -hmm. and, and, and and you have to trick it. Just like when I was back in a factory, I would just, talk, I love this. I love this. I'm doing it. You worked in a I, factory? Yeah, for forever. Amazon? No, my family owns a rope factory. A rope and from, from that's the that has to be the most depressing factory. Bro, and so, and killing yourself is super easy there because there's just yeah, ropes everywhere. Dude, I was yeah, I was always hanging around, dude. <laughs> always hanging around, tied up. Uh, nice, but dude, hanging from, tied up from the time I nice got buttons. out of school to 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 YouTube till I was thirty. I was in a in a factory. Do they still own that factory? Yes. Really? But talk about sobbing, not knowing what you want to do in life. That was me, dude. I would literally by those last couple years. I was in panic mode. I'm coming up on 30. I think I was 27. And I'm just freaking out. I'm going to be in this factory for, for life. And at the same time, I'm very grateful to have work. Because yeah, I didn't pay attention in school. I had no college degree. And my family has a business that I can work at. I love that you said you're grateful for it. That's oh. a strong feature that not a lot of men have, bro. Incredibly grateful. Like my, my, my family built this business from scratch in a garage with like this little hand crank rope machine. Right, and it turned into this massive factory, multiple factories now, with just machines as far as you can see producing rope. That's so awesome, right? Always grateful, but I knew that's not what I want to do, right? So I was same same thing you were saying, just like a mess, dude. Sobbing, what am I gonna do? Like 
please open these doors for me. And it was just like fireworks, dude. Boom, 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 boom. I awesome. think it started with your grateful heart. Yeah. I Great, think it Grateful did. and being thankful for the Lord always. Like I was always, my, my prayers were always like, thank you for what I have and what I always will have. Like mm. I, always, I already know he's going to do more. Mm. Um, have you heard that one? I, I don't know who said it, but uh, he, he basically says, how happy would you be if I gave you a hundred million dollars? If I gave you a hundred million dollars, how happy would you be? Pretty happy. Pretty happy. But what if I told you, if I gave you that hundred million dollars, you couldn't wake up tomorrow? Yeah, I remember this. Right? Yeah. And then you go, well, I don't want it. Well, I don't want it. Yeah. So then you're saying waking up tomorrow morning's worth better more than, than worth more than a hundred million dollars. That's yeah. And that's exactly the trick we have to play in our minds. Cause we think we want, we just want money, but really all we want to do is wake up. Mm. The problem is we're waking up and we're not doing nothing. Mm -hmm. It's not until the idea that you can't wake up that you want to do something. Mm -hmm. It's, it's mine. It's, 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 it, your brain will just torment you. Two things I want to circle back. The, you said you're going to look at it differently when you're a father. Yeah. So I'm going to show you a point of view of a father and then I'm going to tell you what my mom said. Point of view as a father, if you give your uh, kids a toy and they kind of mis mistreat it yeah. or they're not grateful for it, how eager are you about to go get them another toy? Right. Probably not. Because you're going to be like, this is a spoiled little brat. I'm not going to give him anything anymore. My mom uh, I was on the, my mom is like, I feel like my portal between me and God, right? She's mm. just so much more wiser than me and knows the Bible better than me. So when I speak about it or hear about it, I always filter through her and we discuss the Bible together. Uh, when I first moved out here, I was living at this place called Sycamore and Growing up, I was in Scottsdale, Arizona. So to picture that, Scottsdale, Arizona is like a Beverly Hills of uh, Arizona, right? Okay. Very nice. We had a great neighborhood. Everything that I've ever touched or was around that was tangible to me was brand new and very nice. Uh, so when I came out here in my 21 and I was very frustrated at my life because I didn't know where I was going and I had no friends out here. My, I was interning and I was just scrubbing toilets and getting shit on and like just being mistreated and uh, my girlfriend left me. Like it was just just unbelievably annoying. I was so lonely. I would go to the grocery stores just to talk to people. <laughs> now, I'm not even kidding. I say that as a joke in my yeah. stand up, but it's legit. It was true. I let go and like, oh, you like Fruity Pebbles? And they'll be like, get away from me. And I'm like, okay. And I just walk away. You're like Will Smith and I am legend. Or he's just talking to the mannequins. No, I'm not so even kidding, desperate. bro. Especially out here, everybody looks like mannequins. So I, I literally call my mom and I go, what the f bro? Like, why am I not? Because everybody at the time was living at 1600 Vine. Yeah. And I'm like, why am I not living in like a nice place or like blah, blah, blah. Like what, what did I do? Like what, you know, like I'm working just as hard and blah, blah, blah. And I was just like this very spoiled mindset. Wow. And my mom goes, hey man, you, you're in LA. You're in amongst them and you're already demanding at the top. When you forgot that you came from Arizona and there's so many people that kill to be in your position. Mm. She goes, I hope God doesn't bless you. Mm. She goes, you don't deserve it. She goes, why don't you start walking around and acting like you are grateful to be there? And I was like, okay. And so I went to Target and I asked my mom, because I didn't have money, I asked my mom for cleaning products. The reason I was complaining is because the place that I lived was old, it was run down. Then my parents were paying my rent. That's how spoiled I was. My parents were paying my rent. I didn't even know the definition of like, the, or the, 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 the quality of a dollar at the time because I was so spoiled. Mm. And they're paying my rent. And uh, I was like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start getting work. So I got side work to help pay my rent. I was scrubbing the floors every night before bed. Your, your place, your apartment. My, my shit place that I hated. Yeah. I would scrub the floor, I'd bleach the tub, I would clean my toilets the same way I was doing at my internship. And while I was doing that, I would be praying and I'd say, thank you God for this opportunity. Mm. Thank you God for this opportunity. And w one day after another, I started believing it. And then one day I'm like, bro, I'm, I'm in LA, bro. Mm. I could go outside at the Walk of Fame's right there. Like, what am I complaining mm. about? And this switch happened to me. But it was really when it was my heart turned, I got this crazy brand deal, bro. And I was like, no, like, it wasn't like, a, oh, here you go. Like, now you're a good kid. It was really when I transformed my heart. And I was like, wow, I could sit here for a bit. And I got a brand deal that could easily help me move to a better location. Mm. And I moved to a better location. And it was at that moment in my life, I had to remember that. If God gives you something, treat that respectfully. Mm -hmm. be, be like... Be, don't break your toy. Yeah, be confident, but not, don't be, a, I'm trying to talk about God and trying to speak the, don't be a dick, bro. <laughs> like if somebody gives you some shit, don't be a dick. You know what I mean? Like if, you, if I give you a nice I, car or like something, don't yeah. be an asshole. Bro. Yeah, if, you, if you've ever gifted anybody something, they're not grateful, 
you're never gifting them again. It's gross. It's so gross. It's, it's gross. Like, they just don't appreciate it. Yeah. But if you ever give somebody the littlest thing and they're so happy, you want. You just want to give just, them more. Let's do it again. Let's that's do it the again. father aspect that you were talking 100%, about. 100%. Yep. 100%. So now, okay, I get that vibe too. I get it. Yep. I love this conversation. I'm Our all, kids are not grateful. What are you talking about? They're well, not? <laughs> well, Here's the other. Oh wait, have you ever beat them? Because that's good. My parents used to beat me. Here's all the time. other. Here's the other issue: is they're <laughs> they're they're growing up uh, a lot different than we grew up. We we both grew up incredibly poor, incredibly poor. Both of you guys? Yeah. Well, how, how did, I'm so sorry. How did yeah. you guys meet? Um. So, her, her sister is married to that guy, Chase, who is we good choice. We've grown up our whole life together. Did she chase him? <laughs> chase him around. <laughs> chase him around. Um. We met, we met through them. Okay. Um, but but we, we all grew up poor. Um, my kids and my fear is that they're not growing up poor. They have everything. Mm. That any, they don't even know what they have, right? So it's, easy, it's easier to be ungrateful, right? So my challenge constantly is to try to teach them to be grateful. Uh, it's tough. It's super tough. And I also grew up with uh, a mother and father that worked in a factory all day and night, come home dirty, wake up, do it again. I seen physical labor, I seen physical work. That's how we have the things we have. My kids don't see that physical labor, see that physical work. They, they see, see the me, glamour. They see me maybe on a laptop doing something and we have this, this, this beautiful life. So constantly fear and lots of prayers that my children uh, turn out right. <laughs> do you, do you, my dad, uh, you know what he used to do for me? Um, maybe this could help because I grew up, my parents, when they first came to the country, didn't have pennies. Mm. Built their f***ing asses up. Now they're millionaires. But my mom and dad would make me work in the Arizona sun for $100 a week. They, w they would give me that. That's it. And I came to my dad one day and I said, dad, what the f***, bro? We're rich. <laughs> give me more than $100, bro. Like all my friends are making fun of me. I can't even get like a movie and dinner at Islands. And I remember this. My dad goes, oh, is 100 bucks not good for you? He goes, get in the car. And we went to this hood because my dad had uh, properties in the hood, in nice areas. The liquor store is obviously in the hood. It's a great market. He goes, he goes, there's a bunch of people standing outside. He goes, 100 bucks, one week outside, da, da, da. People are running to the car with their hands mm. up. My dad goes, get the fuck out. So thankful for that. He goes, that. get the fuck out. And I go, what? He goes, I'm going to replace you for these guys. Get out. You're not even getting $100 now. And so I was begging him. I was like, no, 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 dad, like, let me do it. Like, I need the money. I can't not get 100 bucks. He goes, now it's going to be 50. And I'm like, 50, bro? Like, you just, I just wanted more. He goes, no, because you don't understand a dollar. He goes, look at all these people that will replace you right now. Why would I want you? I could replace you right now and get them. What he goes, how about this? 50. And then all of a sudden, they're shooting their hands out still. He goes, no. He goes, 50 or nothing. I go, okay, I'll take 50. And he looked at me. He goes, you will be replaced within a blink of an eye for somebody who's going to take your opportunity better mm. than you. And so like, I think if you take them to these soup kitchens the way my parents did or take me to the less fortunate places and put also boundaries, my parents wouldn't owe it. Because when I used to go into the store, I think it was at the age of eight, my dad sat me down. He goes, no more. When we go into the store, you come out with a toy. He goes, no more. Mm. He goes, when we go in, we're getting groceries, we're getting out, no more toys. When I wanted to do music, uh, and I got it, and I was like 16, like this this microphone? Yeah. This was a recorded uh, thriller. Michael Jackson uh, did uh, his whole album off this microphone. How do I know this? Because I had to do my homework on the microphone. Hmm. My dad would not only make me do homework on the microphones that I wanted, he would make me write a song and perform it in front of him. And if he didn't like the lyrics, like the music, or like my performance, he goes, I'm not buying you. It's shit. It's not worth it. And if I performed really, really good, and I and practice three nights in a row before performing in front of him. He'd be like, all right, get in the car. We're going to the guitar center. I'm like, yes. And we would go get the KRK speakers, but I had to <laughs> earn it, bro. I had to earn it. That is an, listen, as a father, that is epic, man. Because it is so fun to spoil the kids. Yeah. And that- That's what the grandparents the, are for. That's the problem. <laughs> that's the problem. You want to see your kids happy. So to be the dad that's full of love, but also hard, that's what creates such a good boy, such a good child. And uh, it, it's definitely been a weakness for us. It's something we're working on constantly of just like. Invite Uncle George. Yeah, yeah Uncle George, just give me your belt so he knows which belt he it gonna is. He's going to take you to the hood. <laughs> 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 Did you ever get beat when you were a kid or no? Oh, my God. Yeah. Dude, you have to yeah. hit your kids, bro. Yeah, you I, have to well, hit your kids. That's going to be really 
tough for me to say <laughs> well, that because people are going to get really mad, but you have to hit your kids, bro. You have to hit your kids. If you don't hit your kids, life will hit your kids. My dad was – it's so funny that you say that. Why is that even controversial now, right? Like it's crazy that that's a problem now. Mm-hmm. Like people frown heavily upon But look that. at the f- kids that are around nowadays, bro. I don't want any of them. Any of them. Well, if a bus came to hit all of them, I'd have been like, oh no, my bad. Every <laughs> time my dad spanked us, belt, whatever it was, dude, now I'm just like, we deserved every piece of that. 100%. Every piece of that. And you know what? We, we probably only did it one more time after that. Bro, if there's no consequences, <laughs> kids don't give a f- they, they, they don't con- care. They control you. My ki- my, like, when I was a kid, my friends were like, this is like, dude, middle school. They, we weren't allowed to cross the street because cars, right? My friends didn't give a shit, bro. They would jaywalk and just walk cars. To just go to 7-Eleven and get like Mountain Dew and Skittles and all that shit. I would not. And everybody like, man, George is a pussy. I was. I was. Because you know what would happen if my mom and dad said, hey, you're not going across the street. And then they found out. Mm. It's better for me to get hit by the car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding. But that, okay, that fear no. caused me not to go across the street. Don't be stupid. Now, how many parents just told their kids, hey, son, don't go across the street. It's dangerous. And they did it. They're like, hey, I told you not to do it. And then one day a car hit them and they'd never get to see their kid again. Mm. You know what's all, happened. All because they want to be really fun and cool. My, kid, my, You know what my parents thought? They didn't give a shit what I thought about them. They didn't give a shit. They, uh, people, these parents want to be validated to their kids. We're equals. Yeah, you want to tell me about your feelings. I'll tell you my. I didn't have feelings. You want to be. <laughs> you want to be friends first is the problem, and that's the problem. Yep. We can't all be friends, man. Yep. We need dictatorship. We yep. need. We need authority. We yep. need type of guidance. And if you're not going to get that in your own home, then guess where you're going to get that? The school. And the school right now is a mixing pot mm-hmm. full of all types of decisions yep. and mental views and spiritual views. Yep. And the teachers are not getting paid enough to raise your fucking kids. Yep. They're not getting paid enough. We're yelling at the school. They're not doing enough. Shut up. Shut up. Those are teachers. They're doing their best job to teach your kids math, okay? Stop putting an iPad in front of them when they're home and start teaching them. Yeah. If I ever got a, uh, my parents got a call from the school, you know, my parents would be like, no, 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 we don't even need to hear you. You're right. Hang up. <laughs> Ass beat. <laughs> Ass beat. And but now how much do you respect your parents now? I've always respected my yeah. parents, bro. Yeah. Always. And let me tell you something. Like, not for nothing. You just got to hit your kid one time real good for him to remember. And then you just do one of these. And they're like, oh, fuck, I remember the last yeah. time, bro. Like, I don't want to get my ass kicked. Yeah. It just takes one. Dude, they used to, you used to get beat in school. My dad used to get hit in school by his I, teacher. Oh, by, oh, by my, my. By the teachers. Oh, no, dude. Can I you know, imagine yeah. now? No. I mean. <laughs> it was not long ago where the teacher was allowed to discipline the child physically. I don't love that. <laughs> but, but. I don't that, love that because like, what if the they're like disciplining t- your kid in the wrong way? You know what I mean? Because yeah. like, they're just frustrated because of another, another student. I'm just saying like, like how fast. Like, Ch- shit's changed. Things have gotten soft. You know why? Things have soft. You know why? And I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I'll be the balls guy to say this. Take my career. I don't care. It's all the pussies that didn't want to give first place to the first place. It's all that everybody wins and you're right and everything's okay. <laughs> everything's good. You're going to be fine. Guess what happens when they came out of school? They hit reality with other mother that don't give a shit about your feelings and they hit this ground and they don't have that. And now they're sensitive, they're scared, and they're, we're just, just, just breeding a bunch of pussies, just a load of them, just hundreds and hundreds of thousands of them. And they're like, oh man, this is my point of view. <laughs> your point of view, bro. Go back to work. No one cares. Which is, go build a rope in the factory, bro. Just shut up. Go back to work. <laughs> Nobody cares, bro. And the fact that our teachers are like, hey, everybody cares about your feelings. Here's your, your ribbon feelings for matter. No, they don't. They do not matter. Not a single bit. You know what matters? Your work ethic, what you're bringing to the table. No, you're right. As soon as you get out of that school, it's it's go time. Hell you, yeah, bro. You you are just hitting the starting line. My dad told me one day, he, I swear to God, he said it. Like a champ. Nothing phases my father. When you come from Iraq, I don't think anything could really bother you, okay? He comes up to me. I go, dude, I'm so f***ing All these blah, 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 blah. He goes, hey, 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 hey. Less competition. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> what? He goes, Let's comp- let, them, let them breed their kids like that. Good, fun. <laughs> no, no competition. And you know what? Think about it, bro. I'm not a, see it. Look, look at other ethnicities that come to this country. They're wiping these people's jobs mm. away. 
like it was nothing. If I if I was in a waiting room to get a job and I saw a nice Asian man sit down from his country, I'd get the fuck up and leave. <laughs> There's no way I'm competing with that guy. That guy knows math more than I would ever know in my life, knows how to read, knows how to act. Because in his country, it's respect, honor, and discipline and work mm-hmm. ethic. Our country is how you feeling. Mm-hmm. What do you feel like you are? What's going on in your mind? It matters. No, it doesn't. Does not matter. I'm Facts. sorry, bro. Like, and a lot of a lot of social media people are like, no, dude, you don't want to say that because of the brand deals. You, dude. Like, I don't care, bro. Take my money, take my fame, take everything, but you'll never take my dignity away from me or my or or what I actually feel is worth worth fighting for. And I'm trying to get these people in our generations to like shape up, bro. I hate when people talk shit about America. I hate it, bro. It's you versus the media. Bro, it makes <laughs> me so mad, bro. My parents came to this country, risked their life for this country. Everything and there's so many people that are like this, and all they want to do is talk shit about our country, fuck our government, fuck our president. Shut up! You don't do anything for our country. What do you do? Leave a TikTok comment? You're worthless. <laughs> go get a job. Go go do something for something. Go do something for someone else besides yourself. We are we are just giving a generation of people growing up only caring about themselves, mm. their selfies, their creations, their jobs. Their, back in the day, bro. You saw an old person get out of their car, you'd go up to them, grab their bags, open the door for them. The other day, I opened the door for an old lady, and she started crying, bro. She's like, it's been forever. Hmm. And I go, are you f- kidding me? We're getting to a point where, like, young people are not holding the doors for older people. Well, I think I'll- it's from where you are, too. Here, like... It is a lot different to, to yeah. city to city. I think that's why yeah. I love Texas so much. Because Texas they, is great because they, they have, have that. respect. Mm-hmm. I love Texas. Everybody, hey, how are you? Hey, Bro. how are you? It's like real humans. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Dude, sorry, I get so worked up when I think about I love about it. You're on, oh God, You're on fire. Oh my God, I hate it. I hate it so it much, up. bro. I hate Speaking it. Speaking of TikToks, you're making some right now, so keep it up. Dude, I, I hope. <laughs> repost my shit, bro. Get your sh- get your head out of your asses, bro. You know what we need? We need that, so, uh, that 70s show. We need red. To be in everyone's houses. Well, you yeah. know what they've been calling everyone a dumbass. God, bro. right? Look you know at what? our TV show. Here's what look, they- look at our shows, bro. N- there's no learning factor in any of them. Mm. When you watched Full House, you know when the violin started f- playing, and you're like, "Oh my God, you shouldn't steal from somebody." Like you learn shit. Mm-hmm. Now it's just stupid content that you don't learn anything from. Well, they've they've cr- nothing. They've they've created this ability for us to uh, censor ourselves. Right, mm. so, like you said, you're gonna take my brand deals. You're gonna take my. We've lost brand deals from stuff we've done. Right? How? Like holding up a couple guns, big deals lost. Right, and it's like that's just who I am. Like yeah. that's just who I am. Right. Just, it was, it was, I look at the picture. She's holding somebody's head in the background. No. Nope. All right. Okay. <laughs> no. Nope. Maybe that was the reason nope. why. <laughs> but what happens? What do you do next? You don't really want to hold the guns up. Right, so you you censor yourself mm. to play along with the with the the career, right? Yep. I, I want to have this career. I want to have this podcast. So you. Uh, so I got out of that. I don't do that anymore. Yeah, I do not care. It's I great. literally, I do not care if my career ends tomorrow. And I swear to God, I do not care. Like a lot of people think, like, oh, he's just saying that. Yeah. I I hate this industry. Well, you're well on your way, George. I hate this industry. <laughs> you're well on your well, way. Listening to people talk about their fake shit, like uh, sometimes on a podcast, bro. If I'm not saying anything, is because I'm like not feeding into the bullshit. And and. Now, if you say what you just said, you're either idolizing Andrew Tate, yeah, Trump supporter. Mm-hmm. You have an American flag, and yep. I have an American flag at my house. Yeah, everyone just automatically assumes I voted for Trump. I'm a Republican. I'm, I'm a or racist. Or you're just an American citizen I, that loves his country. That didn't go into the mind. They have, like, they've created this. Like, it's crazy. But it's you crazy. know what happened is because, bro, it's us. It's our fault. My kids. Love every kid. Their favorite color as a kid was the rainbow. Yep. And I show that in a video. Oh, he loves the rainbow. Oh, he's gay. That's why he loves the rainbow. No, he just loves the rainbow. It's beautiful. It's every color. It's one of the prettiest things in the sky. It's 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 crazy times, man. It is crazy. Pretty much everything you say at this point can just can upset somebody. (laughs) Bro, listen, I'm on the podcast. And they will be talking about porn stars doing cocaines off their asses and running off of roofs and killing themselves. And I'll be like, you know, Jesus really uh, helped me out. They're like, shut up, shut up. Yeah. I'm like, bro, what happened? Yeah. What happened? How did we get here? Yeah. How did we get here? Like, I remember when we were growing up, like, all the values that they installed in us are gone, bro. Like, gone beyond belief. So this is what I say to people. 
I'm going to be 100% me and I'm going to stand up for me because I truly believe there's a lot of people out there that are decent human beings and they have my same point of view. So I would rather have 20,000 views on my podcast mm. of people that are self-respectful and they're trying to grow and be better neighbors to the people around them and actually contribute to our country to build it back up instead of shit talking it that have 5 million people watch my shit that are brain dead, stupid people that are contributing nothing. Mm. Take my money, take my house, take everything. As long as I have my beautiful girlfriend, have my family, have my dog, and I have this thing in my, in my body. Not a lot of people have it anymore. It's called a f***ing soul. <laughs> if I have that, then I'll be fine. I could sleep at night, bro, because well, bills I, don't pay for that. I'll tell you, now more than ever, people need it. They need to hear it. They need to hear what you're saying. Have they need to hear what we're all saying. I think, I think it's time people to need it. to stand up for what they believe in. There's bro. actually, I think we're at a turning point where people are desperate to find people that they can relate to. Because they're playing this media game where, yeah, that's what I believe, but they really don't. They no, really bro, don't. bro. Listen, I'm cutting people out of my life that do yeah. that. I straight yeah. up, I go, hey, man, you got it. You got it. That's gross. That's very gross. I don't, I would be a lot richer right now if I even took some of my offers that I had that. My own father would be like, dude, it's not that big of a deal. You could, but I know that it's a mustard seed, mm. right? It'll grow into something really gross mm. and disgusting, so I don't do it. I'm watching people sacrifice their integrity for a dollar, and I'm just getting to a point where I'm like, dog, I can't. I can't associate myself with you, bro. Yep. I can't do it. I can't, it's tearing me up because I am hanging around you or I'll do a video with you. For example, if we're sitting here and you were on some shit like that I didn't believe, I would either one, get up and leave and be like, hey, don't post this podcast. I don't want to be a part of it. Or I'll just talk shit to you on your podcast. <clears throat> but I'm done like being a phony about it. Because Here's the reason it. why, bro. Back in the day before Madonna was like Madonna, right? She did some crazy outlandish shit. Like crazy shit. You, when she was dressing like a stripper at a church, the uh, Catholicism uh, 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 priest made a rule that she wasn't allowed to be in um, Italy or like Rome. One of the countries banned her. Like, oh, she can't perform here. They shut down her tours, right? That was her being crazy. Yeah. Nowadays, you're crazy if you're just telling people to be a little bit more considerate to the people around them. Stop being selfish. Dude, it's crazy. I want to be the Madonna of this generation. <laughs> I want to be the guy who'd be like, hey, dude, stop thinking about yourself. And people are like, whoa, that guy's... He loves Andrew Tate. Dude, stuff with I what? stuff I do with my family gets censored, but Sam Smith and WAP is trending on all platforms, all social media. All like tell me. He's brave. Tell me. <laughs> tell me not. there's something wrong, dude. Dude, the music they, industry sucks. They want it. Yeah. They, they don't even do good music anymore. They just dress weird and act weird and they get awards for the being. The problem weird. is they want us to love it, but I think more people don't love it than they think. I think people are pretending to love. I think stuff. they keep overshooting it and missing, like the Balenciaga thing. That was an, oh, oh. Uh, we are cre we're firing our creative team. Hey man, <laughs> <laughs> that had to have gone up the tadpole. You know what I mean? Like, there's no way that you guys just yeah, just kids just bouncing whatever half you want. naked on a just bed. Just post whatever you want. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, bro. That that was overshot. There was a lot of them that were overshot. Um, the uh, that what's the guy? Little Nas X with yeah. the blood in the shoes yeah. and all that stuff. You don't have to be a Christian to be like, that's weird. Yeah. They promoted that there was real blood in it. That's that's weird. Mm -hmm. But it well, gets people talking, I, which means it translates to more money. It does. So who's, who's, it does. who's in We're the wrong? We're still talking about it. So who's in the wrong? Think about it. Is it the viewers or is it the people like, putting it out there? Because if people were, I always tell people this, you know, they're always like, oh, the Illuminati and all that stuff. I don't believe in that. I do not believe that there's like one world order and all these people are like, this is what we're going to do. I believe that there's a lot of rich people out there. They're like, hey, how do we get more rich? Let's get some shit going. You know what I mean? Like, let's make shit people, look, let's make people talk about it. So whose fault is it? The people that are advertising it or the people that are like grabbing it and be like, oh, let me share this to 10 friends. Mm. Let me comment on this. Let me talk about this for a week. Well, I, be I believe pretty heavily in spiritual warfare. Of course. And mm -hmm. Satan feeds on temptation. I mean, that's what he's, that's what he's got. Mm -hmm. And man, Temptation everywhere right now. Like you can't open an app without seeing temptation. You can't, you can't watch a music video without some yeah blood naked. blood in the shoes yeah. and some chick twerking on the floor. And and by the way, that's promoted, not censored, and it goes out to a hundred million people. Crazy. But huh? my little like hang out with the family gets demonetized or flagged or they want that. They want that. Weird. I, I remember like when we were a kid 
like kids and like you would watch like a, a girl like that was like holding her boobs like this and you would like kind of like look at it from the side because you'd even want to be caught looking at it, right? Remember that? You'd just kind of be like, oh shit, like yeah. that poster is crazy for Miller Lite. Like they're crazy for yeah. that. And I'll just look at it like that. And my dad would put it in the back of his stores where like the beers were. So like like kids wouldn't just look at it during the candy yeah. section, right? But now you go on Instagram and like no disrespect to anybody's girl or guy that displays a lot of lustful content. But to me, it's like, I don't mean, again, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but like, what's your, what's, why is that worth it to you now? Like if my girl was posting nudes on OnlyFans or like doing all, to me, it's not special anymore. It's, it's mm. That's supposed to be for me. You know what I mean? Like it, that's a very vulnerable state that that woman is in. And so when I undress her, that feeling is gone, bro. It's like, if you undress a girl that's undressed to the whole world. I think we're just all so addicted to dopamine to those quick hits. Like uh, if I was an attractive girl and I post a picture, when, I would love all these comments. Mm. You're so hot. You're beautiful. Do me. Yep. Show me your Do feet. Do me. Sorry about that comment. <laughs> that's the father's version. <laughs> um, but it's free dopamine. It's mm. like drugs. Every time I post a picture, I just get drugs, dude. All these love and comments and people drooling over me. It's got to feel amazing, mm -hmm. right? And it's like that with everything. Like, we're just full of dopamine. We're so full of dopamine that if we're not constantly full of it, we're, we're instantly sad. We're instantly depressed. We're instantly laying around. I have nothing to do. Like, we have to constantly be just cranked out of our minds, cell phones in hand, social media. No, we're a slave, bro. Bro, we are so addicted to, to the high, of everything, caffeines and and the, the social media now is so fast. I can get and you always feel left out if I you can don't get a, look at it. I can do a hundred videos in a few minutes, like <laughs> right, and your brain's just like. <sighs> and now imagine you're not forty and you're twelve. Bro. Your brain is just exploding, and you're seeing literally a monster truck, then a half naked chick, and then a firework. Your brain <laughs> can't comprehend it. To see these things, you had to experience it in real life. Now you just see it on your phone. You see everything. Think about this. When you were in a sixth grade or seventh grade, back in the day for kids, the, like people that are our age, remember when you used to compete with those kids? You're like, oh, damn, Spencer's fast. Like, and now you're now these kids are competing with the whole world. Bro, these kids are going to be traumatized. They're going to be like, oh, I'm done. There's nothing. Because they're looking and they're not educated enough to be like, oh, this is a filter. Or this is not how their life is. Or this is edited. They're like, look at their life. Look at my life. My life is stupid. I don't even want to be Bro, imagine being in junior high right now or high school with 10 followers. Right? Haha, uh -huh, dork. Like, Dude, oh, shit, now I got to go buy followers. You literally are, pro I can't even imagine the judgment now. You have to have followers now to be cool. <laughs> Dude, it's such a nightmare. Scary. I'm so glad I'm not a kid. I, I, I try my best to give anybody listening so much more hope through these podcasts. I think you know what it is. I think mm. the pendulum is swinging back because conversations like this. So when people are like growing up, they're going to be like, oh, I, I guess they are right. And it's like, but it has to have like real organic conversations. There's not a lot of people that would have the balls to post this podcast out. Right. Because they would think brands would get offended, oh. their audience would get offended, all that stuff. It's like, bro, like if you're easily that offended, go work on yourself. I think secretly, <laughs> I think secretly people are dying for this content. Really? Good, because I'm starting it. Take, take Andrew Tate as an example. Great example, by the way, because he just spoke if some real shit. If people didn't want to yeah. hear it, why is he the most massive influencer in the world? Because people want to hear it. Mm -hmm. People are desperate to hear somebody speak the truth. I've heard, I've heard things Andrew Tate says, and I'm like, oh my God, he, that is dead right. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes, but he shot himself in the foot because of the trolling, bro. Like, yeah, but like, it, like uh, if his girl does OnlyFans, that he collects a percentage out of that. And all that's yeah. just like, like he ruined it because if he, because he makes it hard for us to defend him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like no, I, I it's hard for I me know. to it defend him to be because like, I'm like, no, because he says some chauvinistic shit, and you're like. I, and this is what everybody says. Well, I don't agree with everything. Yeah. Him and Trump, bro. I don't agree with everything <laughs> he said. But it's but, the safe way to say you've listened to Andrew Tate. Yes. I don't agree with everything, but he I has don't. said some stuff that's. But he is proof. People are desperate to hear real talk. You know, just I have a, be real. I have a conspiracy I've came up with. Let's hear it. But I'm scared of launching it out there because, like, then I'll be like grouped in with the. Conspiracy. Nobody watches this podcast, so go ahead. <laughs> I have a conspiracy. That if there is hypothetically a, a, a power of people like the Illuminati or all that stuff, it would be genius of them to make fake accounts 
to go through their agenda. So for example, if they post something that a lot of us are like, that's kind of weird, but then you see 10,000 people be like, oh my God, this is the greatest thing in the world. Now we're kind of like, oh yeah, that is pretty cool, I guess. Because we all give a shit about what people think around us. It's so us. easy to do. So easy. It's, that's the way of like washing away a direction that you want to go. Mm. That's my little conspiracy. Because I'm like looking at these bots online and I'm like, who sent you, bro? They're so real now. Yeah, the like AI's. The, bot, the bots AI's are scary. Are, AI's are, <laughs> bro, when I go into like a, like a Wendy's and there's like a, like here, you, you put it in on your screen, it breaks my heart because the guy was like, oh, you, yeah, you just go over there. And I'm like, dude, you're going to be out of a job. In a Soon. Second. Yeah. You're Soon. pointing me over there and I'm going to be pointing you to the unemployment section because like they're taking your jobs. And now the AI thing, bro, they have like attorneys now that could be AIs. Dude. They're going to have uh, uh, like uh, health doctors going to be AIs. It's never going to Bro, they're going to, one thing after another, they're just going to start removing people. We'll be just fully trusting computers. They're going to remove fully. middle class. All those movies you watch where they're like, this will never happen. We're walking towards there. Imagine the laws just based on AI. Whatever that whatever that AI says, that's that's your. There's no more jury. It's AI. It's it, we're gonna get there. <sighs> it will be able to ingest all. The oh, there's gonna be um. Uh, uh, there's attorney AIs now. There's there's literally so many AIs and it's like dentist where they do the uh the like. The, do you have, do you see all these um articles of like Amazon just fired 20,000 people like, yeah. all, it's because bro they're, they're getting things getting to replace replaced. them because now you're no longer paying for somebody but also their insurance uh, uh, all these TikTok videos of people are like look at what my real job's not showing you you think they're gonna f with that for a much longer no they're not because mm -mm. now Taco Bell got a hit from that uh, 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 when they were feeding the pigs like the plastics and stuff like that and that guy lost his job being like look what the, you guys are eating when you're eating this they're going to filter you out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're and guess what people are doing? They're running towards it. They're like, this is great. Look at the future. And it's like, buddy, no. Because you know what happened? <clears throat> Everybody thinks that they could be famous online now. They're like, oh, yeah. I could just make a vlog. And it's like, dude, we're in it and we're barely in it. We're mm -hmm. like about to get wiped away by an AI influencer. That's going to be like, hey, guys, look what I could do. And then it's just like a computer that is coming. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and it's like hyperspeed. It's like what happens this year is going to be 100x next year. It, it just, it's just magnifying. So it's coming in so fast that you're you're catching it after it's already happened. Mm -hmm. It's like oh, it's already here. What? Everything's <clears throat> timesing by two every every like few months. Even propaganda, bro. Back in the day, you would watch on the news, and the best thing you could do is turn the f news off because it's giving you anxiety. Now. <clears throat> We have 100,000 outlets of people be like, did you hear what happened in Iraq? Did you hear what happened in Connecticut? And they're just powering through it. And here's the worst part. It's not true. They're not even reporting right. All of these are they just fake get likes. news. And you know what they're doing? Before the news outlets, we used to get mad at them. You're only doing this because you're, you're getting money. And now the whole world's doing it, like hypocrites. All these kids are like, do you know why? We're gonna die next week or next month is because like this video and find out. I don't want to like this video and find out. I want to know now. What, what am I? Why am I gonna die? I don't know. I think if you just unplug, just unplug for a bit. I think it's everything's hard. good in moderation. It's hard. Just spend two hours in the morning without it. Two hours at night without it. Have a little moderation. The, in the very beginning, Adam and Eve ate the apple, and the apple was uh, uh, based the the story behind it was based that it was the fruit of knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. So they could determine for themselves what is good or bad, right? So they took too much and they were freaking out. In the scripture, it says that they were losing their mind because they had too much in their hand now. We might all have eaten the apple and have too much in our hand. Oh my gosh. So you need to put it down mm -hmm. and relax, breathe, bro. You're not supposed to know everything. I just freaked this guy out. He just went. That just. It's so. I know. I'm like, oh my god. There's an apple on the yeah, phone. Yeah, you're true. Because this this has become our uh, another limb. Of course. Do, bro. Go to the bathroom without this. Go 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 to bed without. It's a part of our, our structure now. We we this is part of me. Look, it's sitting it's beside me travel. the whole podcast. It's how you eat. It's sitting it's beside how you. you. Do everything. It has to be right beside us. It now gives me comfort. I have to have it. Do you ever have a vibration and yeah. it's not a vibration? Yeah. You feel like you're you. Feel it, you go, and you're like somebody's texting me, and you look, and you're like, no one messaged me. Or I'm you, just feeling it. Bro, if I walk away, I instantly anxiety. Where's my? Oh, there's my phone, and you feel good. You're like, oh my. God. But here's the That's thing: scary. I feel like it's it so scary. I really don't think the world is like it's is as bad as we're painting it out to be. Is as long as we put borders around. Bro, it. let me tell you something. 
Turn this off. Yep. Turn the TV off. Turn your computer off. Go outside. Mm. Life's beautiful. Two day, Life's two times. Beautiful. Bike ride a day. Life is beautiful. The sun's out. It's, it's a recharge for your soul. But if you sit on this all day, the world's falling apart. Everything's over. It's done. Mm -hmm. You know, I stopped reading comments after the whole Bobby Lee situation, and it's changed my whole life. Like, reading, it, like, I'm a very secure person of who I am. I'm yeah. very secure. But yeah. if you read 10,000 times, George Janko's not funny, he's a piece of shit, I'll be like, oh, I'm not funny, and I kind of am a piece of shit. Like, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, you start thinking it. Stop bringing in shit that you don't need. Yeah. You don't need to know every thing that's happening online and if you're so worried about everything else it's causing you to stand still in your life you're not mm. doing things for yourself just give yourself time to breathe and know that like bro like it is about the journey it, you're not going to just want to flash to the end of your life where you have all your success mm. because that's only think about this if you win an award for a basketball game right like the championship whatever right the 15 games you had to play you're going to remember that and feel that more than the two seconds of them handing you a trophy and you're going like this. That's two seconds, bro. So you're, we're all living for that just two seconds of like, I did it. Just enjoy your life. Put your phone bro, away. Spend so, time with your family. Man, I, I will say like uh, a lot of our viewers, they, they know how we live. They know what we have. They know what we've created over the years. It's so much more fun doing the journey. Uh, it's now, all about the journey. We have the home. We have the. We've been successful. We've. You know. We're starting a podcast now, but that journey irreplaceable. We have once we had it all. It's like then it becomes comfort your enemy. Then then it's like eh, I can just chill. Or you get scared of losing it. Yeah. And now you're just in fear all the time. Yeah. Or you're just you're just as creators. We have to keep creating. Like I want to just keep creating, but. Yeah, you get comfortable. You get like the journey is so fun, man. It has and it's to be. like that with everything. That's why I started a new channel with zero subscribers, because that's the journey. I don't want to start a channel with an established. I don't want to start a podcast on my channel with ten million subscribers. I want to yeah. start with zero, because mm. the journey is so much more fun. Yeah, and I yeah. agree with you hundred percent. Man, we got real deep. This like I'm gonna get canceled yeah, for are, sure on this podcast. What are we at? I, I think no way. I think we're at a great point to cut it. Yeah. What I do you think, think? I bro, it's so good. Yeah, and also we have to do another podcast. Yeah, we're gonna go do <laughs> your podcast. All right, and we're gonna end it. Well, thank and, you, thank you for having me, bro. Yeah. And, and yeah, I, hope bro, I, I wish say I wish you wouldn't talk so much. I know. You just really. No, I felt like so we were dry. evolved. We were evolved. <laughs> we're gonna get you to talk way more on my podcast. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Wherever you're at. Um, we love you. George, thanks for being here, man. Thank you so much it's for It's an honor, me. dude. It was thank awesome. You, thank you, thank you. Uh, we, we, what are we going to sign off with? That's a wrap. You're beautiful. You're one of a kind. Smile more. I don't know. Oh, we smile more. We haven't posted <laughs> the last one. Remember that? One. Yeah. Um, I was so jealous of that. I was like, oh, this guy. Genius. Smile more. I right to it. the point. I love that brand. You see this one? That's our new one. Pray more? Yeah. Why did I think of that? <laughs> <laughs> we love you guys. You're beautiful. You're one of a kind. Smile more. Pray more. Bam. Pray more. Yeah, that dude. That was great. I loved it. Huh? Wow. That was, uh, that was a great last podcast. Dude. You're going to cancel me for sure. No, that was... <laughs> I thought that was beautiful. I didn't even, even want to... I just wanted you to just keep going.